Going seamless to Mr. Tillis as it's time for under 30, and we look at a name that's been a uh, you know topic of discussion for this segment a few times. That's Rigetti Computing, RGTI, one of the players in this quantum space. Now, George, I know it's a post-earnings uh, situation here, but so many of these companies are relatively pre-revenue or very small revenue is, correct me if I'm wrong, quantum is kind of early days. It's still sort of an R&D space, right? It is. And if you look at, you know, the, the outcomes of quantum computing, eventually um, there are basically faster processing capabilities uh, that uh, classical computing doesn't offer. But it's still in development for the most part in terms of application. But there's also, when we talk about this whole space, I mean, Rigotti is up, uh, I think, 1,700 percent over the last year. There's obviously a lot of capital flight into these equity spaces contingent upon you know, these revolutionary technologies in quantum computing, which is accelerated computing uh, in terms of next gen uh, availability integrated with artificial intelligence. And um, obviously, there's a lot of players out there in the small cap space, but in the large cap space, uh, we talk about other businesses like Google and IBM, for instance, in this uh, in the space, Microsoft Azure as well in quantum space. But uh, Rigotti does uh, does generate revenue. So we have to keep that in mind. That's uh, that's a positive. Uh, they did post uh, earnings uh, today, and if you look at the EPS, uh, they actually missed the estimate. They came in around 13 cents of a loss uh, that uh, was higher than the estimated seven cent loss. So it was worse than expected, uh, and a little bit lower than last year, which uh, posted around nine cents. Uh, and sales also are very small for the business. Uh, 1.8 million dollars as posted for the quarter. And that was actually a slight miss and down 42% year over year. So if you just annualize the run rate in terms of sales uh, for this fiscal year, uh, they're estimating still around $8.7 million. For what it's worth, the stock valuation, $5.2 billion. That's quite high. Uh, and I suggest if you look at some of the breakdown of the, uh, of the numbers, their operating expenses for the quarter were over $20 million. Net losses close to 40 million. So if you annualize that, that's 160 million, uh, which isn't too much relative to a 5.2 billion dollar market cap. But I think one of the reasons why the stock is actually holding up quite well is um, they did denote they have stronger balance sheet through secondary offerings. Uh, cash on the balance sheet is around 571 million. So again, for what it's worth, that's uh, that's more than three or close to three times the annual burn uh, rate for cash. So I think that's one of the reasons why the stock is actually, you know, close to flat line, slightly to the upside uh, post earnings, irrespective of the fact that they missed both on sales and earnings. George, just a longer term story, as we've discussed, I saw, you know, McKinsey, love him or hate him, the consulting firm, though, suggesting that uh, mm -hmm. this market could be 97 billion by 2035, 198 by 2040. Uh, those are long time from now, and we have really no idea really what the world will look like at those times, but it goes to show the sort right. of longer term runway for these companies. Kind of reminds me of the Oklo in the nuclear space. Like you're betting on an idea and hoping that you found the winner here. Um, is this uh, a space where these smaller firms can really compete with the NVIDIAs and the Metas of the world? Well, that's a good question. I, I think when it comes to their technology, it really comes down to the, the, the quantum processes they provide. Uh, you know, this one, this company is associated with, uh, with uh, University of Berkeley, uh, California, mm -hmm. Berkeley. Um, you know, their quantum application programming is very unique relative to the others, but it's a race to develop these technologies. Um, this company seems to be well capitalized right now, but their sales are still relatively small. So I think what's happening here, Alex, is that eventually we'll have some sort of quantum computing that's ubiquitous. Uh, it just comes down to what market environment we're in. And right now, we're in a very high beta rich uh you know bullish environment so that's still propagating these these uh these uh these new technologies like quantum computing uh but i do suggest you know you have to keep be mindful that um the the market cap relative to revenues is quite high and if we do see a significant pullback in some capacity in the overall markets that uh, these are very high beta names that might be significantly challenged uh if the market does pull back very well said, and that's where sort of traditional valuation metrics kind of assess the risk for right. you. But you have to also know that you're investing in potential here, uh, not today. So it's a it's a complex discussion, but uh, certainly a fascinating space and name. George Tillis, appreciate it as always. Good insights.